Hi, this is David Watkins with Turf Nerd Lawn Care, Dayton, Ohio. We're at the end of March 2023, and I just want to make a quick video to, um, you know, to address a question that we get a lot this time of year. Not only are we getting this question, just about every lawn care company in Ohio is getting this question, and that is, when are you coming out to do our lawn? Uh, sometimes it'll even be all my neighbors lawns have been treated already when are you guys coming out and some folks actually think we're perhaps we're late or um, they're just inquiring either way the answer is the same for everybody and um, you know every company does things differently uh, so I can only speak to my lawn care program uh, there are companies that that have different programs and different they use different products not all products are the same and nor do all products last the same amount of time um, so, and not only that, not all lawn care companies um, are targeting the same type of weeds um, at, that, that we do at certain times of year. So let's get into this. What it, number one answer is we are driven more by the soil temperature and growing conditions than we are the, the, a calendar. And I did make a graph here to illustrate um, you know, kind of what what to expect, but this is just going to be a guide. It's not a rule, uh, you know, a, a hard rule that we have to follow or should, or actually should follow. And the reason for that is just because it's February or March or April doesn't mean the soil temperature uh, in the soil knows what uh, the calendar date is. So we're going to go by this graph is based on averages and average year. Um, and, then, and then I'll address what's going on this year at the end of the video. So on a typical year, um, our spring broadleaf weed, so that's gonna be our, our henbit, chickweed, hairy bittercrass, that, that they'll start waking up. Um, when I say wake up, start growing. Anytime the ground's, the soil's not actually frozen in February and March. And I use the, then I put in here February, I put a question mark for both February and March. And I said, you know, maybe about 10% of these weeds are, are actively growing in February, maybe 30% in March. That's if the the ground isn't uh, so cold that that's not conducive for it to grow. So there's a question mark there. Certainly by April, six, the, the, the remaining, and I, you know, I broke this up, 10, 30, 60, you know, to collectively give us 100%. But definitely by April, the weeds are growing enough to uh, be able to absorb a herbicide. The risk of doing a treatment too early if you're targeting spring broadleaf weeds is if you apply it in February or even early March and it's too cold that the while the weeds are there, they're present, you can see them. If they're not actively growing to the point enough that they'll absorb that herbicide and translocate the herbicide into the roots in order to kill it, it's not gonna kill the weed. So the herbicide, was wasted, an unnecessary application was applied, and you're gonna be disappointed uh, as a customer. We're disappointed as a company that wants to provide outstanding service. So it is very risky to try to apply broadleaf weed control um, you know, in, in the earlier, as soon as everything starts waking up. You really have to have enough growth that's gonna translocate that herbicide down into the roots to kill the plant. The reason that matters is, you know, most folks will say, well, why does that matter? Because the first application is crabgrass pre-emergent and fertilizer. That is true for 90% of the lawn care companies in our area. Um, however, we do apply broadleaf weed control with our first application of the year. Um, there's a number of reasons for that, but the biggest one is it, it, it helps both of us. If we wait until April uh, or until May, I'm sorry, until May when the second application is starting to be, when it's time to do the second spring application, you've had about six weeks, all of April, part of March and beginning of May for those weeds to grow and produce seed and um, seed that will germinate next year. And uh, so it's gonna to contribute to the, the weed problems that we're gonna have later later this year or next year. So we do wanna apply broadleaf weed control with that first application, okay? So a lot of folks are concerned, but my crabgrass is gonna germinate if you wait too long. Well, yes and no. Mostly 
No, but yes. Okay. So a lot of folks, so we start, I'm hearing them too. The, you know, the big brand companies are advertised on, on radio and television right now. Get your crabgrass pre-emergent out there before crabgrass takes over your lawn. And they want you to get it out there right away. Okay. The reason for that is because their first application is only crabgrass pre-emergent and the next one is going to be your broadleaf weed control. So you have to get that crabgrass down early so you have time to get in the next treatment pretty quickly to get the broadleaf weed control. The, th the thing is, crabgrass will not germinate in February, will not germinate in March. Very rarely, very rarely in Ohio, southeastern Ohio, southwestern Ohio is what I meant to say will it germinate in April. And it, when it does germinate in April, a lot of folks don't realize crabgrass dies with frost. So we typically continue to have frost. Our last frost date is in early May. We continue to have frost all the way up until May. So even if germ crabgrass does have an opportunity to germinate, um, it's just a little seedling and the frost takes it out. So crabgrass, and I put on here, 25% of crabgrass typically will germinate in May, the majority of it, 50% of it germinates in June. And then you can get some other, some late bloomers, uh, germinators that will start to germinate in July. So I broke it up. This is, every year is going to be a little bit different, but you can expect about 25% of the crabgrass seed that's going to germinate all season long, this season, is going to germinate in May, 50% of it in June, and the rest early July usually or so, okay? Depend. All this is weather driven, all right? So by the way, uh, for crabgrass to germinate, the soil temperature has to sustain, has to be sustained at at least 57 degrees at a two inch depth for a minimum of five to seven days, okay? So if we get to, so it has to average 57 degrees. A lot of folks use 55 degrees as the rule, it's fine, we can say 55 degrees. Uh, but scientifically, it's actually 57 degrees. Um, so uh, it has this average 55, 57 degrees for five consecutive days. If on that fifth day, we dip back down into the 30s, and that brings that average temperature back down to 50 degrees, we're starting over again, right? We need five consecutive days at 57 degrees before it germinates. Now, of course, air temperature for soil temperature to be at 57 degrees, our air temperature is gonna be considerably higher than that. Our nighttime temperature has to be considered as well. So if we're hitting 65s on a regular basis, but we're getting down into upper 30s or, or low 40s at night, we still have to look at what that average is. And, and really, you don't have to really pay attention to what the air temperature is so much. There are, we, we actually monitor soil temperature because it has to be measured at two inches. We measure it here, but we also subscribe to a, a service um, that that actually monitors that for us in every zip code throughout uh, this part of the United States. So we're monitoring that. With that, we also know when it's time to start and when it's too early to start and when it's too late. And I'm going to say too late with an asterisk next to it because that there's a lot of variables that decide whether or not it's too late to apply pre-emergent. One of them is what you're applying, what, what rate you're applying it at, and what else you're gonna apply along with that. But we'll get to that in a little bit too. So, all right, if we just recap here, no crabgrass is gonna germinate February or March, most of April. I put a question mark here because in warmer years, such as this one, it can germinate in April. Um, as a matter of fact, this year it's likely to, however, uh, don't forget that we also are likely to get multiple nighttime freezing temps or frost that's going to take that anything out that that germinates in April and then 25% of what we're going to see in May then June so forth okay so what happens if we do apply crabgrass pre-emergent in February all right so crabgrass pre-emergent on most labels it's designed to last approximately four months from the time of the application right there are things that can happen that will reduce that 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 time and there are things that can be done or can happen to extend it okay but let's use four months as your average and uh, if you're going by um, 
the label rate that is um, we're, we're going to use four months as that average. Uh, if you apply your pre-merge in February, you're only going to get until the end of May of solid control, good, good control, and then it's going to start tapering off in, in the June, okay? If you apply in March, you're going to get good solid control all the way through June. It'll start tapering off a little bit in July, okay? Remember, there are some things that I said we can do to extend that, that length of control. Applying in April, which is actually pretty much ideal, uh, you're going that you can uh, get your extent, you can get complete control all the way through July, and it tapers off in April. There, I meant to say August. There is a reason and we'll talk about that too. Why we want that pre-emergent to completely be inactive by the time we get into mid-August. All right, we'll talk about that in a minute as well. You can go in as late as May uh, on a, this is again an average year. Uh, you would apply at a little bit of a lower rate to try to get a, only about three months of control and of solid control, and then it tapers off when we get into August. If you're applying in May and crabgrass has now germinated, what we would do, what lawn care professionals do, and we suggest you do as well, is to add a post-emergent herbicide to that treatment. So the post, the pre-emergent is going to prevent that grass seed, that crabgrass from establishing, and a post-emergent is going to kill the plants that have established, has germinated and emerged, and we're now we're going to apply, apply post-emergent to kill that plant. Okay, so when's the best time to apply? All right. It's actually a six week window. So it, 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 there's, okay, so that you, you can have a specific date. I'm sure, well, I'm not sure there is a, a date range of, of seven to 10 days where it is optimal. How, if you're applying only by uh, a, a, a particular rate. So if you're locking yourself into, um, and you want four months control to a, a 45 hundredths of a, of, a, of an ounce per thousand square feet or whatever your product is, I'm just making this up, um, and you want four months control, yeah, sure, you would time it right at the, right when the soil temperature hits 52 degrees for seven consecutive days, five consecutive days, you're gonna apply it right then, water it in right away, and you're gonna get your four months control. So you run out on the exact date, August 15th, and that because August 17th is the day you wanna sow grass seed or something, okay? That's just an example. Um, the reality is lawn care companies when I say companies, I'm talking about dedicated lawn care companies that do lawn applications for a living. We have, obviously we have more than 10 customers. We have several, we have a lot of customers. Um, what we do and what most people in this industry does, even, even golf courses and uh, sports field managers that uh, can't always apply on the specific week that um, is optimal as far as the soil temperatures is concerned. You would apply within this window so the window is actually six weeks. Um, now, if you're going to apply at the beginning of this window, uh, so say late March or early April, if you're gonna apply within that first six weeks, what we do is apply our product at a higher rate. So on a label, on a herbicide label, on uh, even uh, pre-emergent and post-emergent labels, there's a range, there's a low range and a, well, there's a high rate, and a low rate and a high rate, and that's the range. And the earlier you apply, the higher the rate you want to apply it at, so it lasts longer. The amount that you apply is directly related to how long that product's going to last. I'll talk about that in a second, too. When we get in, but keep in mind, we're going to apply a high rate in March because we want it to last all the way until at least July and be gone by August. When we're in April, this is the middle rate. This is the average rate. This is the, the rate that most companies would want to apply it at. You're going to apply at that middle rate. So we're running out again at the end of July, going into August. Same thing with May. We're going to taper it off quite a bit, but we're going to add a post-emergent. Um, the reason we are going to apply, we, we want to end, we want this to uh, be completely out of the soil, or not out of soil, but be uh, inactive by mid-August is not only so we have time to seed if we want to or need to. We you never know what's going to happen in midsummer. Uh, you, you know they may have insect problems or 
disease problems or some reason you want to fill in thin or bare areas in the lawn to uh, thicken up the lawn or just introduce a healthier turf variety into the lawn. You don't want that crabgrass pre-emergent interfering with your grass seed um, when you apply that seed in August. So the window to seed is also about six weeks. It's mid-August to the end of September. Again, we're talking about uh, this portion of Ohio. Uh, for us, it's variable in the other parts of the United States as well as Ohio. Okay, so um, we have a six week window, the pre-emergent, post-emergent. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, I know I, I probably mentioned something. Let me check my notes real quick. Most weeds germinate in warmer temperatures. And, um, oh, I, I don't know if I, I, I mentioned this, but we, we adjust the, um, the, the pre-emergent rates uh, as we, so when we start out earlier in the spring, for those who we do start off earlier, like, um, you know, so if we do have, have some customers that need us to start in March, we applied that very high rate in March. And then by April, we're at the mid rate. It still is a, uh, we're adjusting it as we go through the month. And then by, by April, of course, uh, by May, we're, we backed it off quite a bit. Um, now, I uh, almost forgot, this year we are ex much warmer than we, at this time of the year, than we typically are. Therefore, we were able to start applying a little bit sooner and applying weed control. So we just started, we just got started. We still have, so here we are, the end of March. So we're gonna start right in here. And we're gonna apply this, well, here's my window, I'm sorry. We're gonna apply this round crabgrass pre-emergent and broadleaf weed control. Uh, we're also doing a, uh, a light rated fertilizer as well to boost last fall's uh, high rated fertilizer. We're applying that now. We have six week window to get this done. So we're at the very beginning of it. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind while you see the other lawn care services providing services to your neighbors, that same company there, when they see us, a few blocks over treating the, your neighbor's lawns over there, their neighbors are calling that company saying, where are you? Turf nerds already done my lawn, <laughs> right? So we're all getting the same phone calls and um, it, it's, you know, it just goes with the game. Uh, when I say game, it goes with the business. Um, you know, folks, you know, just see other companies out and they, they're concerned that their, their service provider is running behind or something like that. That's not the case. We all, take that six week, some companies take eight week window, uh, especially the folks that start up in, in February and early March, um, they take a full wait, eight week. Usually it's because they have a lot of customers. To give you an idea, let's say uh, a, some companies will have their technicians take care of a thousand customers per, per round, per treatment, where we only do about 400 cu customers per round, um, per, per technician. So, um, you know, if you do the math for 400 divided by six weeks, divided by five days, that gives you an idea of uh, how many we're doing versus a company that's doing almost a thousand customers. Cause I'm telling you, there are lawn care companies, they're making their technicians do 30 to 40 lawns a day. I'm not gonna name any of them, but um, ask if you're not a customer of ours, ask your technician how many lawns they have to do a day and you'll probably be shocked. Um, they're, they're doing about double what, what I require of ours, what we do. Um, so um, anyway, what I was telling you was the, uh, you know, we're just entered that window for the per, for optimal timing uh, of about six weeks. We'll probably actually get down about five weeks, but um, you know, like today it rained all morning. You know, there's a number of, last week we had a rain out all day. Uh, so there's gonna be weather conditions, high winds. There's a number of things that'll, you know, postpone us by another day. So it's actually scheduled for five weeks. Expect to get, we expect to get it done in six weeks. So I hope, boy, I hope this helps answer some of your questions. And even if you weren't wondering, uh, now you know. So I uh, hope this information is helpful to you. And I'm gonna, I intend to start making more of these videos to, to answer questions that our clients call in about or even write in and uh, provide feedback. And also as I'm going out doing diagnostics, I think I'm gonna try to make some videos to um, just uh, discuss some of the, the you know, disease issues and insect issues and weed issues that we face every day and maybe help educate you on that as well. All right, have a great day. Thank you.